The Speed My Ass challenge is just like the regular first map, but all enemies have a very high movement and attack speed. You have to be swift and precise. Make sure you play with the keyboard shortcuts for the babies. Putting them in your hand with the buttons 1 to 4 saves you a lot of time compared to the usual drag and drop style. Don't put your chats in the far left, you don't get any benefits from doing that. They can easily be replaced later on if one of them dies. Start building them in the fourth column. You should always try to kill the first two to three gapers by quickly placing a Bob's brain on the lane they spawn on. They will have just enough time to grow up and explode. Don't worry about your little chats. Like I said, they can easily be replaced and you should never stop placing new ones. Use them as a meat shield and place them in the columns 4 to 6. Your top priority should be to build 3 full columns of bobbies in the 3 left ones. Those 3 columns combined with the meat shield in front will be enough to win the challenge easily. Never stop placing new chats and bobbies. Use them on cooldown whenever you can, even if it is at the front line. You will flood hearts anyway which makes the tactic really affordable. As soon as the first wave is about to approach, you will already be at a point where you can spam cubes of meat and random bob sprains as well. Just use everything on cooldown. Don't be afraid to sacrifice your babies on weaker lanes that get in trouble from the fatties, like my top lane right here. It doesn't have to look nice, it just needs to win for you. As soon as you have established 3 full columns of bobbies in the back, start to just spam random babies at the front on every lane. Try to use the cubes of meat against the fatties. You should be totally fine if you never stop placing stuff. Don't worry about symmetry here. Every second counts. I will fast forward the rest of the challenge since it is already won. The unmatchable challenge is all about mining cards. You have a preset of 5 babies and 5 cards that cover an entire column each. You have to fight with just them. The most important part of the challenge is to never put the Pegasus and the candle on the same lane, as the wind attack of the Pegasus would blow out the fire. Brother Bobby, on the other hand, should always be on the same lane as the candle, since the fire will ignite Bobby's shots and turn them into exploding fireballs. The fire of the candle will also turn Freezer Baby's frost tears into regular projectiles, but you should not hesitate to put them in the same lane anyway if you need the extra DPS. I would also highly recommend to not use the cube of meat on the earlier enemies. You don't need it for them and it will just lose health points for no reason. As soon as multiple gapers start to spawn at the same time, try to split up your guys into three teams. The freezing baby and the pegasus solo and brother bobby paired with the candle. There's also a little trick with the cards that you can abuse here. You can try to quickly slide the cube over the enemies to cancel the attack animation and heavily slow them down. As soon as the first big wave spawns, start to use the cube of meat to block one of the lanes and attack the others with your three teams. Try to switch the Pegasus and the Freezer Baby around for crowd control. The Mindfuck challenge makes you play a map where everything is invisible, both your babies as well as enemies. 
You have Bobby, Chad and a reusable snow globe for 225 hearts. You will not be able to see your babies, but there are still some indicators that can help you plan out your layout. For example, you can scan the ground to see where you already placed one of your guys. Start the map with the same tactic as in the speed challenge. Spam chats at the front, column 4 to 6, and as many bobbies as possible in the back, column 1 to 3. The big difference here is that you have to start placing your brother bobbies a little bit earlier since you don't know where the enemies are coming from. Try to fill one column as soon as possible. You can still easily win the challenge even if you are unlucky with the first enemy like I am here. Don't panic and just place the next available bobby on that lane. Just like in the speed my ass challenge, never stop spamming new chats and bobbies. You will never run out of hearts anyway if you don't use the snow globe for no important reason. The map of this challenge contains Mali booms, but you will be able to see the ignited fuse. But since we place the chats at the front, our important bobbies are safe. Continue to spam chats at the front and bobbies at the back whenever you can and never use the snow globe until you overflow many hearts anyway. The rest of the challenge will be easy. The Civil War challenge is more of a mini game rather than an actual challenge and thus by far the easiest. You will just play a little game against Mega Plum. You have a set of 4 enemy types that you can spawn on the map. Gaper, Fatty, Biter and Maliboom. All have different cooldowns depending on their strength. This challenge is really easy and straightforward. Just match the lanes that Mega Plum is using by filling them with monsters of your own that are at least equally as strong. Mega Plum will occasionally drop poop on the field, shoot some of your guys or smash the ones that make it through to her, but none of that should concern you. Don't make the mistake to send all your guys forward at once. Always wait for Mega Plan to make a move and then counter it the best way possible in that moment. Also make sure not to get greedy if Mega Plum is about to die. Play it safe until she is down. There is no need in rushing it and risk an enemy killing you because of impatience. The last challenge in the initial alpha build is called Limited Edition. This one was by far the hardest one and was already nerfed 3 times in the first week after launch. You have Whisk Baby, Little Loki and Cube of Meat in your deck and you only have the map's passive heart generation to work with, while 4 lanes on the map are blocked by spikes. The enemies will come from all 6 lanes though, which means you need the special shooting patterns of your babies. There are multiple tactics that can work, but I did it like this. 
Start by placing four Wisp Babies in the middle of the map as soon as possible. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, but make sure not to use the two far left columns. Don't worry about the middle lane too much. The Wisp Baby is actually quite good at defending itself at close range. Taking a few hits will not matter. Don't use your cubes. Seriously, don't place any cubes of meat at all. The minus 50 hearts will heavily slow you down and you guys are fine without them anyway. As soon as you have 4 wisp babies, you should go for 2 little lokis next. One on each lane in the far left column. Those will help defending the middle and clear up leftovers that made it past your wisp babies. After that, you place 4 more wisp babies in the front and as soon as they are done, 2 more little lokis in the back. You should only place a cube of meat if you're really certain you need it. The biggest obstacle in this challenge are the two stoner enemies that will spawn close to the end. But you will be fine as long as you don't get a really unlucky spawn here. Down from heaven. 